welcome. <laughs> welcome to World Travel 101. My name is Teresa Love, and I'm here with Rachel Rigoli. Hi, Rachel. Um, we're both in San Diego. She's, uh, she, I don't even remember what part of the county you're in, but I'm out in La Mesa. Uh, wishing I was at any one of those destinations that you see on your screen right now. Um, thank you to folks who are putting in the chat where you're headed, what program you're going with, and for how long. This is an opportunity for you all to start meeting one another, and it helps Rachel and I tailor what we're talking about today um, to what you're going to be experiencing. So Brittany is headed to London. I see um, Rome in the fall. Oh my gosh. Oh, Costa Rica. Fantastic. Um, LSE. LSE is what? London School of Economics. Ah, London School of Economics. Okay. Well, there's quite a, uh, there's Netherlands. All right. Oh, South Korea. That's going to be fantastic. There's London School. So several people, London School of Economics. Athens. That'll be great. Lauren, I love it. Mediterranean politics, food and culture. Okay, get a big suitcase. I got to be able to fit in there. <laughs> Dublin, Ireland. Oh, and Berlin. You know, um, I was in Berlin in 1991 when the wall was falling. Talk about a, a trippy time to be there. Well, folks, let's just up, jump into this. Uh, first of all, congratulations on uh, your opportunity to study abroad. Um, I don't think I need to tell you how lucky you are because you are having an opportunity that so, so, so many people haven't had for a couple of years now. So not only is this um, the opportunity of a lifetime to study abroad and grow as a human being, but to step out in a world that has been transformed socially, politically, um, health-wise, I mean, it's just, it's a brand new world out there, and I'm so excited for all of you. Um, Shirley, Santa Cruz, is that, I'm assuming not California, I'm curious. No, that was, that's one of our domestic programs, so she's- Oh, okay, well then, yeah. sure, great, California. It, it, it is almost like another country. <laughs> All right, so here are some of the things that we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and shut the chat down. Rachel, you've got that. Um, here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about where you're going. We're going to talk about pre-travel research, uh, what to pack, what to take, what to be ready for. We're going to put some emphasis on how to prepare for your trip. Um, do you, you know how to use the raise your hand feature in the chat? Raise your hand, not in the chat, on, on your um, videos. Raise your hand if this is your first trip abroad. Look at that, Rachel. Do you see that? That's so exciting. Oh my gosh. Okay. Whether you've been abroad or not, we're going to share some information with you. I love that so many of you haven't gone abroad. <clears throat> Once we're done with the full program this evening. Uh, I'll stay online for a few in case anybody has any specific questions. You'll also have my email address if you wanna um, send me any email questions. So here's who I am. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Love. I have a PhD in uh, higher education and I've done a lot of traveling. I spent all of 1991, you know, that was a really long time ago. I spent all of 1991 traveling around um, North America and Europe, and that was fantastic. Uh, since then, um, I've done quite a bit of travel with university students. Uh, San Diego State University had a program where uh, 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 we would, as chaperones, more or less, um, go with the students on their study abroads when they were short term in January and in the spring. So I've traveled with students, not only through San Diego State University, but through Radford University in Virginia, where I took students um, to the Bahamas and to France. So um, I know what you're gonna be experiencing. I've done it myself, uh, I've done it with students, and 
that's why I get so excited leading this workshop. I'm also um, a specialist in intercultural communication. I don't say I'm an expert because I don't feel like anybody is, but I wanna help you get a start as you become intercultural communication um, professionals. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how to get ready for your trip. And I imagine you've done a lot of Googling already. Um, you're, you're getting ready for your destination. You're getting excited. Um, here are some pictures to give you some ideas on what you're going to research, the, what I recommend you research. Um, uh, upper left-hand corner are two people greeting. Greetings happen differently all over the world. And now that we have experienced COVID, greetings are happening with less uh, physical contact in some places. Uh, in, in France, uh, it is common to meet a friend um, or a coworker that you're well acquainted with with a, a bisou, the kiss on the cheek, or just like an air kiss off the cheek. Um, we have shaken hands here in the West. Not everybody's doing that anymore. So that might be something you wanna research. Clothing, what you're wearing, definitely look at how the fashion and the styles change from season to season where you're going. Um, one way to do that is to go on Instagram um, or another site and look at photos that were taken in the season that you're gonna be visiting your country and see how people are dressed. Example, took my students to France in January. I warned them in the winter months in most parts of France, people wear everything from brown to black, every hue of brown and gray and black. Well, that's really all they wear. The travelers stick out because they've got color. So most students heeded my advice. One gentleman though showed up in a bright red parka. He literally looked like a sore thumb. It was horrible. And he immediately realized his mistake because he was the only spot of color anywhere we went. So he went and grabbed a new jacket to try and blend in a little better. And that's really what you wanna do when you're traveling. You wanna try and um, blend in. You want to try and look like a local, act like a local, and have that local experience. Um, <laughs> there's a pit toilet here. Um, I, you know, I don't I, uh, places that I saw in the chat where you're heading. Um, I doubt any of you will be using a pit toilet. Quite frankly, I often prefer them to Western toilets because they're much more sanitary. <laughs> Your derriere doesn't actually touch anything when you're squatting over a pit. Um, but something to think about, and um, if you are going to a place that maybe in the rural areas has pit toilets, uh, do some reading about how to use them. You want to take your own toilet paper because it's rare that you're going to find any there. So just be thinking about it. Um, food, obviously something that uh, you should be looking forward to. I beg of you while you're traveling, try new food. Escargot, as pictured in the lower left, may not seem like something that you wanna try, but I promise you that once you try it for the rest of your life, you'll be able to say, oh yeah, I had escargot. People think that that's pretty impressive. And it really only tastes like the garlic or whatever else it's been cooked in. Just a little chewy. Um, but definitely try new foods, uh, try new flavors. Um, we'll come back to that, well, I'll just say it now. Um, when I travel, I always travel with Benadryl or allergy meds because I never know if I'm gonna be allergic to something that I eat. Um, and that way I can eat whatever I want, not worry. Um, I have uh, two, I believe those are French police officers or it might be British, I think those are British police officers in the center. center. Another thing to research before you go is how to, what's the best word, approach or um, relate to uh, the police officers in the country that you're visiting. Um, 
one of the things that you will notice in most of the places you're gonna be visiting is that um, outside of the United States, police officers are generally heavily armed. Uh, uh, the, the French guard, for example, and you're in the, the guard, which is the train station. When you're in the, the guard, you'll see um, basically cops with like big old rifles <laughs> or automatic weapons. And it can be really scary when you first see it, but don't even worry. That's just how places outside of the US roll. Uh, what you do not wanna do is take pictures. And that's the kind of thing you can learn in free travel research. I've been in other countries where the police are super open and welcoming. Um, for instance, in Costa Rica, my students talked to the police and actually got to sit on their motorbikes for pictures, which I would have, <laughs> would have never expected, but it was, it was pretty awesome. So you're going to be doing your pre-travel research. As part of that, you're going to be looking at the culture that you're going to be visiting. Now, culture is something that we can really only see on the surface. We can see the clothes that um, people in our host country wear. We can uh, see and smell and taste the food that they eat. Um, we can listen to their music, but we really don't understand the culture until we take the time to get to know people better, until we ask questions, we do our research, and really immerse ourselves in our, in our host country, all right? So that is another expectation I have of you, that while you're traveling, you will move yourself away from your comfort zone and you will reach out and get to know the place that you're visiting, all right? Really, truly get to know the culture. Um, don't be that person that goes to that cafe and asks for cheese fries. And I, I say this having seen this happen. Um, you know, if, if you're in Canada, sure, that's called poutine and you want that. But when you're in France or Rome, no, you, you have a baguette, you know, you, you eat what the locals eat. Um, really please take the opportunity to dig deeper into the culture that you're visiting so that this is an opportunity that will inform how you approach life in general. Um, so when you come home and you're reading the news or watching the news or, um, I don't know, look, looking on, on, I don't even, LinkedIn, Insta, I don't even know. I'm, I'm not a big social media person. Sorry, just lost all credit. Um, so that you're better informed by, by what's happening in the place that you spent so much time, all right? Um, you're going to find that the way you were raised and the worldview that you have is quite different from those um, of the people that you're with because their values, their beliefs, uh, the way they were raised is different from the way you were raised. There is no right or wrong it's looking at how you perceive the world and how someone else perceives the world and how our thought patterns uh, may be different, but just as important and um, just as important. Rachel, do you have anything you wanna add here? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's, so, so an example of doing research, let me check what's on the next slide so I don't, okay. So um, another, uh, here's an example of doing the research and knowing cultural norms. Um, when we were headed to Japan, uh, I did research on Japanese culture and Japanese culture is very much about the, the group rather than the individual. And so in Japanese society, no one wants to stand out. The whole point is to blend in to the point where um, in the 7-Elevens in Japan, um, you can buy, men can buy the, the white shirt, um, the blue tie, uh, the, I mean, they all wear the same clothes. So instead of 7-Eleven, 
Here's a package of white shirts that are, you know, the same one everybody wears. Here's a package of the blue tie that everybody wears. It's phenomenal. So one of the things that I researched was that it's inappropriate to make bodily noises on the train or in public. So no sneezing, no belching, no farting. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still a 12 year old and giggle when I say fart. Um, and I was like, wow. Cause like in the United States, people don't really care anymore. And so I was very cognizant not to, you know, try and sneeze or I, like, I was trying to keep it to myself. And um, I, I, I just couldn't perceive what a culture would be like that people didn't stand out or make noise. But I'll be danged if it wasn't true. I mean, I'm getting a train packed, you know, like everybody's packed. And there, there was nothing like that. There was no blowing one's nose in public at all. No spitting on the floor, nothing. It's so much a um, collective culture that at a baseball game, if you go to down here um, to Petco Park, in the middle of a baseball game, everybody's like, oh, yeah, doing their own thing, right? Um, in Japan, during a baseball game, there's no noise, there's nothing. Until there's a run, and then everybody screams together, and it goes back to being quiet. Phenomenal, phenomenal way to, to see culture work around. I mean, it's just, I love that aspect of traveling where you can see how another whole group of people live and then the differences and the similarities that we have. Here are some resources, places you can go to look at different cultural perceptions, different ways of viewing things, all right? And um, when you're in country, uh, you're gonna have your instructors, you're gonna have host families perhaps. It's okay to ask, can you, please explain this to me, or can you help me know what um, I should or shouldn't do when I'm out in public, things like that. Yeah? All right, uh, so we, we've talked about um, doing our research. Another thing you're gonna do is you're, when you're doing your research is you're gonna learn um, the ins and outs from um, a bigger perspective. You're going to learn what the rules are in different countries, all right? So um, US Department of State is a great site to go to. Uh, they do have the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. And I highly recommend that you go into the STEP website and you do enroll as a traveler. You just have to let the government know where you're going and how long you're gonna be there. Um, to VC, um, what's your question? Or maybe you don't have a question, it's just your hand up. Tell you what, um, if y'all, I'm choking up, you can choke up. If y'all have questions, will you put them in the chat? Rachel's in the chat room and uh, she will totally interrupt me. No, no qualms if anybody has any questions, okay? Uh, so the Smart Travel Enrollment Program is telling the US government where you are and when you're there. And the reason for this is if something should happen, if there's an earthquake, for example, um, the government knows where to go get you. I mean, yeah, sign up for that. I was in Indonesia with the students when there was a volcano erupting. Yes, we signed up with the STEP program because if that thing fully goes, I want the government to come get me, all right? And then you, I used to have to explain what the CDC does. Don't have to do that anymore you know who they are and why they're there, uh, but they do have resources for travelers. Think, be thinking as we're talking about the fact that you're gonna have a host country, but you're also probably gonna take side trips if you're gonna be in country for any length of time. And when we're talking about a place like Europe, we're talking about being able to travel through multiple countries very quickly, all right? So if you are in Rome, there's a very good possibility that you're gonna to head out to North Africa 
for, for a long weekend. Um, so always make sure that you're looking at what you need to have uh, or should have in terms of injections, medication on hand, et cetera, when you're traveling and the CDC website can give you that information. All right. Um, I, don't, I don't think that any of the places you're going to will have many big requirements. Um, when I say big requirements, like when I was going to Uganda, I had to get like four different shots and I had to start taking malaria meds before I even left. Um, so I don't think anybody's going to Uganda. Any questions, Rachel? No, there haven't been any coming into the chat, so all is good. Okay. All right. So um, being safe. Now, we're talking about this not because we want to freak you out in any way, not because we want to scare you, but because Rachel and I have done a lot of traveling and um, we've, we've heard stories from others and we know, we know what works and what doesn't. And we want you to have that information so you don't make mistakes that other people did, all right? So you're always gonna stay in pairs or small groups. Um, I don't recommend venturing off by yourself in any country that you're visiting or in downtown San Diego for that matter. Um, there's, there, there are safety in numbers, especially when um, you don't know a community, all right? should make sense. Don't flash your cash. You don't get money out of the ATM here and go, woo, it's raining money. Don't do that anywhere else. Um, depending on where I am and my level of safety, um, I will go to the ATM with another person and I will use the ATM while that person watches my back and then we switch. Uh, that's always been the easiest way, the safest way. If I am by myself for some reason at an ATM, I make sure that I go boop, 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 do what I need to do and put my money away and, and walk away without counting, looking. I also don't wanna look skittish, like, oh, you know, because then that makes me look vulnerable too. So I take my money and I put it away. And we'll, we'll talk about what to do with your money in a minute. Um, I never travel with, jewelry that is flashy because that's just like a big sign saying, hey, I have something you might want. Um, I never, uh, I never, I would never recommend taking your actual wedding ring if you're married or your engagement ring. Um, put that in a safe at home and go buy something cute at Kohl's or Target and wear, wear <laughs> you know, they even have like rubber wedding bands now. They're so, I don't think they're actually rubber, but they're for like climbers and stuff. That's brilliant. Wear one of those. Leave anything you don't want to lose at home. Always dress modestly. I don't care where you are. Um, you're going to do your research. You're going to know what dress codes are. Um, and, and, and it's not just me being, you know, a prude or something. Um, that you want to, you want to know that you're not showing behaviors in a culture that maybe doesn't accept those behaviors. Okay, so do your research. Mind your phone and wallet. We're going to hammer on this in a second. Um, keep your um, parents, guardians, and family informed of where you are. And uh, I already spoke about staying together in pairs or small groups, but um, being inebriated in any way, shape, or form, wherever you are, especially when you're traveling in a foreign country, is um, very, very, very risky behavior. I'm going to check the next slide. Okay, let's stay here then. All right, so let's talk about your phone and your wallet. When I travel, I, I do two things, um, depending where I am and, and my comfort level. Um, I'll wear a dummy bag. I'll wear like a little cute purse or something strapped across my body, all right? Why across my body? Because I have seen with my own eyes 
a woman wearing a, a strap over her arm walking down the street and folks on motorbikes tear past and pull that purse right off her arm. She might as well have been swinging it like this. So that always goes across my body and it always sits in front of me. Um, if you're in France and you're going to the Eiffel Tower, here's a fun game I played with my students. It's called Watch the Pickpockets. And we, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't laugh. It's pickpockets are good. In these places that see a lot of foreign tourists, they are good. So your wallet should not be in any way, shape, or form in a place that it can be gotten to. All right. And my bag across my, my body, I have my Kleenex, my chapstick, um, my Advil or, or whatever I need. But anything that's valuable is on my body and hidden. A lot of people like to wear these around their neck. I have never been a fan because when somebody sees these straps, it means, hey, I have a wallet around my neck. <clears throat> I wear this. It is actually attaches to a belt or underwear or bathing suit underneath your shorts or whatever you've got. And then um, my money and a copy of my passport and stuff are in here. Um, I have been mugged, but they didn't get anything because I didn't have pockets and this wasn't visible. So that's a good thing. Um, Rachel, tell them about the phone. Oh, so I, um, my daughter studied abroad in the fall and the winter quarter, and she was sharing a story with me about a um, student who was studying abroad in London and had her phone stolen twice. So. The one thing I think we're used to in the United States is we shove our phone in our back pocket and we're not really paying attention to it. Um, this student had her phone actually taken while she was standing on a street corner, you know, with her phone out in front of her and a motorcycle zoomed by. Now that's, that's sort of unusual and rare, but you should be aware of your surroundings. So that's number one. But the second thing is to be aware of where your phone is on you when you're like on the on the metro, if you're in a you know a nightclub or bar or whatever. Um, make sure you're it's in your purse and your purse is in front of you. Um, same goes for your wallet. The folks who steal wallets and phones know very, 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 very well their their business um my friend and i were walking in a neighborhood in bali that was close to the beach at night and all the shops had been closing up and there was a guy in his garage moving one stolen phone to he had a bucket full of stolen phones that he'd gotten that day and he was sorting through them so yeah Keep an eye on your stuff, okay? <clears throat> All right, COVID information. As you know, this is a fluid situation. Uh, so you are gonna have to be responsible for you. Uh, here are two websites that you can look at. There are many more, I'm sure. Make sure that the website that you use is trusted has legitimate information because also, as you well know, there is a lot of misinformation out there. There are and will continue to be rules for um, whether you need to have a rapid test before you travel, before you come to your destination, uh, what, how you show proof of that rapid test. There will be one rule for Italy and one rule for Switzerland. And so if you're traveling back and forth between those countries, are you meeting the rules for your destination and to be able to return? Um, it's a lot, and I know that, but it's, it's, your, 
it's your responsibility because there is no government that was that will accept the oh I didn't know. Mm -mm. You need to know. So make sure you do your research and make sure you do your research um, within 24 hours of going somewhere. So if you're if you're studying in the Netherlands and you want to go check out Norway, because who doesn't want to go check out Norway? Uh, you need to check and see what the requirements are to enter Norway um, sufficiently with enough time to be able to follow whatever parameters Norway has set, and then make sure you know what you need to get back into the Netherlands, okay? And personal, personal thought here, um, if you haven't gotten boosted or haven't gotten your second booster, go do that. Go do that before you go. Um, get that on your card. Can't hurt people. Well, it can hurt, but just because it's a shot. All right, so what are you taking in terms of travel documents? Uh, depending on your country, it could be a little different. What you need to get into South Korea isn't going to be um, the same thing that you need to get uh, to have in order to get into London, right? So again, this is where your research comes in. But obviously, you have your passport. If you do not have your passport yet, you're going to go do that tomorrow. There have been huge passport delays. Um, and yeah. So you need to go do that immediately if you don't have your passport yet. Um, once you get your passport, you're going to take a photocopy of the front page that has all the information on it. You're gonna take a photocopy of that or a photograph of that. And you're going to keep a copy of that on paper in your bag that you're checking in, all right? If you're checking in a bag, you're going to put a copy of that front page of your passport in that bag. You're going to have a copy of your passport or a photograph on your phone uh, and in your um, uh, printed, I'm saying printed copies for your check bag and a printed copy in your um, carry-on. And you're also going to give a photograph or a printed copy to a trusted friend at home because it is so much easier to get a passport replaced if you have all that information, all right? I believe in Murphy's Law, which says that what can go wrong will go wrong. And if you have backed up your passport, documented in a million different ways, nothing will happen, okay? But if you don't, yeah, bad things will happen. Um, you're gonna do your research. You're gonna know if you need visas. Uh, if you are going to be doing that thing, Italy to, to North Africa, uh, maybe you need a visa to visit, um, I don't know. So you need to know if that's the case. You're gonna take a copy of your insurance card. And again, you're gonna have that tucked away in a few different places and with a trusted friend. Your student ID, you're like, well, what is, what is my UCSD ID? Why do I need that when I'm in Copenhagen? because you're gonna get a discount on your museum admission, all right? There is power with a student ID. There are train discounts, there are um, food discounts, there are museum discounts. Oh yeah, having a student ID can, can really get you some sweet benefits when you're traveling. You're also gonna have your itinerary. Don't just have it electronically on your phone. Have that printed out. Um, and then your proof of vaccinations, of course. And because you've done your research, you're going to know if there's a certain app you need on your phone to have your uh, vaccination. Your, I'm talking about COVID vaccination here. Uh, you're going to know if there's a certain app you need to have your COVID vaccination on. Um, other vaccinations, if you need to have them, come on this little yellow card. And so you want to have that with you as well. So questions on this? Again, it's your responsibility to make sure that you have copies of everything and that you can easily access those copies. Um, you never know when you're gonna have to prove uh, what you're doing, where you're going. Um, you don't wanna lose precious time having fun getting your passport replaced. 
treat your passport like it's your firstborn child or favorite niece, all right? Um, don't let it be hanging out about. That is way more valuable than a phone. Um, don't leave it hanging out where it can be picked up. Uh, it, it should always be, here's, here's the thing. Your passport, you're gonna have to research the country you're in. For most of your countries that you're going to, you shouldn't have to carry it around at all, all right? And, and then you just leave it in a super, super safe place, like tuck it in your underwear. Um, whenever I'm in a hotel abroad, I put it in the hotel safe. Um, some places require you to carry your passport with you, but I don't think that'll be the case for most of the places you're going. Thinking if there's anything else on this right now. Okay. All right, how are we doing on time? All right, so, so this is where hopefully we can give you some, um, some solid tips on packing. And one of the first questions that I get asked is, what am I packing? Am I taking a suitcase or a travel pack? Uh, for those of you who are going on short-term study abroad, I highly encourage you to just take um, one or two travel packs, all right? So you saw in that first picture, I wear one large uh, travel pack on my back and a smaller day pack on my front, and I can go for weeks like that. Um, the only time I would take a, a suitcase is if, is if I'm gonna be gone for a month or more. Um, then I take a suitcase, but it's gotta be a suitcase with wheels for me because um, I found out the hard way uh, that most of Europe, <laughs> most anywhere, um, doesn't have escalators and elevators like we do. Uh, so um, I would never take a suitcase that didn't have wheels. I don't think they make those anymore. I don't know. I don't think they make those. Um, so anyway, um, the reason I always prefer to have a backpack though is because my hands are free. I can go up and down stairs. Um, if, if I'm headed to, I keep say, almost saying gar, if I'm headed to the, the train station um, but I, or the airport and um, I have time to kill, I can walk around town and still have all my stuff on me. Um, I, love, I love traveling with the backpack and I have, oh, here they are. So I have two to show you. This is my favorite travel pack. It doesn't look very big, but it's actually massive. Um, this is an Amazon Basics, Amazon Basics travel pack. And what I love about it is that it has straps, so I can use it as a backpack. And it has um, a leash so that I can put it over my shoulder if I need to. It has a zipper to help it expand. And it has a million and a half pockets, a million and a half pockets. Um, when, I, when, I, when I travel internationally with this, um, there are, <laughs> have been so many times where I can't find something just because it's like tucked in somewhere. It even comes with its own rain jacket that I can throw over it. Um, so I highly recommend um, Amazon Basics uh, stuff, they hold up too. They're much less expensive than Columbia. Or, um, uh, I'm losing my, my words. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, because it's Amazon basics, they're not gonna be that expensive. I mean, they totally hold up. And then um, if I'm going for not too long, um, I might just take this bag. This one is a High Sierra. I actually got it on sale at Home Depot, at Office Depot after um, their back to school sale. And um, this also holds a ton of stuff. So it, it, um, if I was going for a few weeks, I would, I would go with both of these and, the, and I wouldn't fill them all the way so that then I would even have um, room to, to buy souvenirs and put them in here. But speaking of that, Whenever I travel, I take a, a small collapsible travel bag. This is a bag that zippers shut um, because I might buy things that 
I want to bring home, but I don't fit in my luggage anymore. My, my luggage gets too filled. Um, I can take my backpack, lock it up, check it when I'm coming home, and just keep this as a carry-on and have room for stuff. Thoughts, questions? What do you see, Rachel? So uh, there was a question about um, for, from Athena, who's going to be going abroad for 12 weeks, and she wanted to know like how many bags she should take. And my response to her was, you're going to carry your own bag. So you're going to need to be able to handle it getting from point A to B. I usually recommend just one you know, larger bag and then the, the carry-on backpack. So I know we're going to talk about all this now. Yeah, yeah. Um, less is more, Athena. Uh, you know what you're going to find, this goes for all of you, um, that when you're traveling, nobody's going to care if you wear the same outfit three times in a week. And if you plan your wardrobe, you, you can take eight pieces of clothing and have 12 different outfits. Um, I tend to only travel with um, like brown, blue, and black. And then I can mix and match my clothing or black, blue, and gray, and mix them. I'm not the best dresser, so maybe not take my advice on the colors. But, you know, at, at least I can um, mix and match my clothes and have lots of different outfits. You're also gonna find that once you're in country, um, people dress differently than you do. And so you might end up going to um, local stores and getting clothes that, that fit in better. Um, so, so do you keep in mind, but you're gonna come back with more than you went with. Um, one, one solid plan is to do like you see in this photo and lay everything out before you go. I always do this, always. And then I take things out. I don't need that fourth pair of shoes. I don't, uh, speaking of shoes, you're gonna walk more than you've ever walked in your life, all right? We are spoiled in this country with, with public transportation and cars and friends with cars. You are gonna walk. I used to have international students come to my campus and I'd say, okay, let's, let's set up our carpools to go to the park. And the international students would be like, it, it's right there. Why are we driving? I'm like, they're Americans. Um, so yeah, put everything out and then start getting rid of stuff. Um, do, don't travel with big bottles of shampoo. Um, every country has its version of Walmart or the dollar store. So you can buy that there. Um, I just noticed there's an iPod in this picture. They just stopped making those. Now, I don't have to update this picture, Rachel. It's so dated now. Um, you don't need 20 pairs of underwear because you build a washer underwear. Um, there are so many different uh, sites and, and TikTok will give you video after video of how to pack. Um, though you see on the picture on the left, the clothes are rolled. That is, <clears throat> in my opinion, the best way to pack because rolled clothes take less space and uh, rolled clothes um, don't wrinkle as much. I also don't travel with clothes that wrinkle because it, it, it's ridiculous. I, why do that? Well, I just thought of something else I was gonna tell you. Um, hold on, let me get this thing to show you. Teresa, I'll jump in while you, yeah, while you find it. I was gonna say, you know, when I lay out my clothes when I'm packing, I look at the colors too. So, it, I may like have, you know, shirts that will go with every, you know, all my pants and I try and stick with like color schemes. Mm -hmm. And then I might throw in some scarves for like some ex, you know, extra accessories. Yeah. Um, but if you stick with like 
you know, navies and browns or grays and blacks and some other few other colors here and there, you'll find that, you know, everything can go with, you know, all the items you've packed. And so you don't need as many things. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, you'll see a lot of these kind of things, these little packing bags online. And, and these are, are fine and dandy, but what I, what I recommend anybody when I'm talking about travel, tell your friends and family they're gonna be traveling and if they buy sheets or pillowcases to save the bags that those come in. This is a clear bag. I can see everything inside and I can completely separate out my underwear or my socks or my t-shirts. They're all, they're all right here. Um, I love traveling with these. They're also good for wet clothes. So, so try and get those from your, from your family. Yeah, any other thoughts or questions about this aspect, the big macro aspect of packing? Don't take a lot. You will regret it. You will regret it. If you wouldn't feel comfortable walking three blocks around your house with the stuff that you're, that you packed, you're not gonna make it wherever you go. Pack, pack your stuff and then walk around your block, walk around three blocks. And if you're uncomfortable, then you have too much on you, all right? Teresa, I put in the chat that, you know, my daughter who studied abroad in Bologna for the semester went with one suitcase and had to buy a duffel bag to get a second bag home. And she, she loves clothing, so she, hit a lot of uh vintage um thrift stores and all of that oh, so um yeah so so don't take a lot <clears throat> i got excited italian fashion yeah yeah so here's some suggestions so we're now we're going to talk about a carry on okay so it's that you're gonna you're, you're gonna check the bag <coughs> most likely so um, if I would, let's say we're going to take a suitcase, let's say you're going, or you're going to take a suitcase or a big duffel bag, all right, or, or a big travel pack, check that to your destination. You don't need it. Um, it's going to go bye-bye. You don't want to have to worry about it while you're traveling, but you are going to have a carry-on. You are going to have some sort of bag that is easy to carry that will slide underneath your airplane seat all right and there, there there's sticklers on that don't think that that you can get away with it and you can't put it in the overhead here's the thing you can take your backpack put it in the overhead and then what i do is i take one of these and i put this in my um, seat back of my airline seat so that if i want to get my kleenex or my hand sanitizer it's all right here and i can get to it easy Travel hack. Um, yeah, definitely travel with a reusable water bottle. You know you can't go through security with liquid. Uh, so you want that empty when you go through and then you want to fill it up uh, once you in the main part of the airport. And then when you're traveling, when you're going to school, when you're walking to the town plaza, you're going to be carrying that with you anyway. Um, in that carry on, you're actually going to have any medications that you need to take. And those medications should be in the bottle that they come in. Um, and you should actually have a copy of your prescriptions. Uh, having a copy of your prescriptions shows authorities that they are your prescribed medication. And then if you have a problem and need to go to a pharmacy, uh, you also have those with you. We've already talked about carrying your printed docs with you. Um, basic toiletries, always TSA size, that's two ounces or less. Um, there's a, you know, a one ounce hand sanitizer, two ounces is nothing. Um, so, so don't, they will take anything big. All right. Um, there is nothing better than after being on a plane or planes for eight hours, going into the bathroom and brushing your teeth when you're traveling. It will make you feel so much better. Right, Rachel? 
Um, snacks, I always travel with protein snacks. So here's a little gif to go, right? I, again, I tell my students this and then it's up to them to listen. <laughs> when we were um, in France, uh, we were outside of Paris, we got on the wrong train going the wrong direction. And it was late and we were, we were all hangry. Um, those of them who had brought, sorry, I didn't mean to throw that. Those of them who had brought snacks were very happy campers and it was very nice of them to share with other people. Because um, you don't know where your next snack is coming from. Anything comfy. Um, another thing I always trouble with is a um, sarong. This is, it's called different things in different countries. This one's from Uganda, it's called Conga. But I always trouble with a sarong um, because a sarong can keep me warm on a plane. It can be a wrap if I'm going into a temple uh, to cover my head. Um, I mean, a towel, I've used them as a towel so many times. I had, a, I was in Bali and I had bought a new blue sarong and I got um, the flu and I wrapped up in it and my white sheet all turned pretty blue with my sarong, that was fun. Um, yeah, so anything that you need for your comfort and safety goes in your carry-on. Tell me about phone chargers, Rachel. Why? Well, I can tell them. It, too many people forget to put their phone charger in there. It's when you're in other places, it's not going to be like the U.S., um, where you just, you know, you're not going to be with people who can loan you one necessarily. You have to have that with you. All right. You have to have a phone charger with you, and you have to make sure that it's working on the same electrical current as the country that you're in which means you're probably going to have to have um uh, what's the word I'm losing my language you're probably going to have to have some form of currency converter all right so for instance uh if you go on to great britain or ireland uh, where's my camera it looks different the, the electrical outlets look different so I have to have a converter so that anything I plug in will work with the electricity in the country. I love it. Um, it says pen here. Uh, I travel all the time with a notebook. And, and the reason I do this is so many reasons. Um, if I eat something that I don't recognize, I can write, or I really liked, I can write down what it is and I can look it up later. Um, I put the address of where I'm staying in here so I can tell my driver, oh, right here, this is where I'm going. Um, I, when I am shopping, uh, I can say, oh, can you, escribe si vous play? can you write that down? And they'll put a number, a Roman numeral, and I can see it's a dollar or it's a hundred dollars, all right? I don't have to try and translate that. I'm getting worried about time. Oh my gosh, man. Um, and here's some other things to pack. Okay, make sure you have comfortable walking shoes. If you're buying new shoes before your trip, break them in. There's this stuff out there that you may never have heard of. It's called mole skin, right? Mole skin. This um, is something that you put on your, your tootsies, your feet, uh, when your shoes start to rub so you don't get blisters. Uh, when I was in Japan, my blisters were so bad, I actually went, oh, I'm embarrassed to say it. I actually took off my shoes sometimes because I was in so much pain. So don't be me. Uh, rain protection. You don't know the weather yet. You don't know when those squalls come through. Um, so having rain protection will make you comfortable and lessen your chances of getting sick and wet and cold. Personal hygiene products, ladies, they do not have tan packs in filling the name of the country. So if there's something that you're really wanting, then make sure you take that with you, okay? If you have sensitive skin and you need a certain lotion, then you need to take that lotion with you and check it in your suitcase. Um, 
coin purse. Why? Why, Teresa? Why would I want a coin purse? Because most countries use coins more than we do. And um, you're going to end up with a lot of coins. So a coin purse, a, a dollar bill isn't a thing in most places. It's a dollar coin, right? Wow. Any questions? I'm like ripping through this stuff. Probably not fast enough. Um, all right, so items for your health. I always travel with diarrhea medicine because you're eating new food, people. Take my word for this. Um, and I'll, I'll, allergy medicine, allergy lotion. I mean, here's like my pack of like no itch, no diarrhea stuff. Um, of course, hand sanitizer and wipes. I said that before COVID, COVID I'll say it again. Um, and if you have spare glasses, do take those. All right. Do your research. Oh, and one other thing. Um, I didn't see if anybody was going to Japan, but this is why we do our research ahead of time. Uh, Japan is a country where they have very, very strict rules on what kind of medication and um, health items you can take into the country. I use um, a CPAP or breathing machine at night, and I had to get governmental permission to be able to carry that into the country. Um, there are um, some ADHD medications that are also um, needing government approval before you can go into the country. So that's yet another reason to do your research. Okay, so here are some sessions that are coming up or have already been posted and recorded for you to um, participate or listen to. And I encourage you to take advantage of all of these, all right? Especially smartphone smarter. That used to be one of the biggest questions we got. And back in the day, I would rent a phone um, that had a SIM card for the country that I was going to be visiting. And then it got to be where I would just get a SIM card and it would work with the phone I had. And now I use a, a, an iPhone. So, you know, every, you know, there's different things change with the time. Yay, go have fun. What, what kind of questions might folks have? I'm afraid to even open the chat, I won't do that. So we've been, I've been answering some questions along the way, um, but I think we could just open it up in general for, for specific questions that's, that um, participants might have. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. Okay.